Now, a lot of people, when they're faced with this task of, okay, well, I want to sort out myself. I want to work out who I truly am. I want to get my life more centered. The whole thing, actually, because they see themselves from a mixed bag concept, is, it's just all too hard. They don't want to go there. They don't really want to look at themselves. They don't want to look at their past. And they're very sensitive sometimes to people who want to bring up issues from their past. Or they may have conveniently forgotten about a whole lot. Sometimes there's massive chunks of their life that uh, are subconsciously been pushed away. Now I'm going to actually show you uh, the practical way that you can sort it out. And by using the positive centered approach, it'll actually be a hell of a lot easier than you would have anticipated. There's actually three ways that I think you can start to look at yourself. First of all, let me just uh, talk about looking at your past. Now, when you look at your past, um, people come in uh, for counselling and come to see us and, and when I ask them to tell me about their past, you'd be amazed. Usually they just tell you about all the awful things that happened to them. Uh, the terrible way they were treated as a child, all the awful things that happened, what their parents were like and all the things that went wrong. And uh, so, you can easily, as a counsellor, be sitting there hearing all these negative stories. But of course, that's only just part of it. For me, it's really important to divide it up uh, and extract out of the history the positive elements from the negative elements. And this starts off from the time when you were born. In your past, there will be some negative events that have happened to you. You will have generated some bad feelings. Maybe bad feelings about yourself, maybe bad feelings about other people. Perhaps your mother or your father or your brother or your sister, for instance. But at the same time, it's okay to look for those things and see what you can learn from those events. But you also need to learn more about your positive self. You need to look for the positive things that happen. What were the, the things that you really enjoyed? So, as it was with the girl that I just told you about, when you were a little kid, what were the things that made you feel excited? What were the things that you really enjoyed? Perhaps when you were in kindergarten or perhaps in early primary school. You know, did you like doing maths and science? Did you like English? Did you like writing stories? Were you fairly artistic? Were you creative? Or did you just really want to be outside and running around doing sporty athletic things? There's lots of little clues in your past that can tell you a lot about who you are. You can gather all those together and um, record them all uh, as information so that gradually you can build up a picture of the sort of person you are as a kid the sort of person that you were as an adolescent and the things that became more interesting to you back then. Okay, so how to use this simple tool to learn more about yourself by reflecting on the past. So I'm going to give you something now which my patients have found really valuable and it's just this tool here for uh, separating out the, the positive uh, thoughts from the negatives and uh, something that you can carry around with you every day and I use it in my practice when we were reviewing the past. Now, I've just uh, drawn these uh, extra little bits here on the, the picture there for you because one of the things that I do with patients is I get them to record information about themselves. So when they first come in to see me they see themselves in this kind of mixed bag way where everything's all jumbled up together and it's a bit of an ad hoc mess, hard to make sense of it all, hard to get a good direction going through into the future. And what we're trying to do is try and separate this out so that they can identify themselves. So in going through the past history, all that information you can pick up from the childhood stuff, any time you come across something that feels like a positive element for you, you can just record that down there. Because there are many different clues. All the things that made you feel good, all the things that gave you a burst of positive energy, you can write those down there. Then of course there are the negative elements in it, and they can be written down there too. Sometimes it might be something like, uh, a parent might have uh, said to them, oh, well, you're no good, you're useless, you're lazy. And uh, if that goes on long enough when you're a small child growing up, it kind of gets brainwashed into your head. Uh, initially, you have the thought, oh, you're no good, you're useless. It gets switched around after a while into, I'm no good, I'm useless. And this might be the sort of thing that you could uh, write down on that uh, on this side of the graph. This thought, this belief, this idea, I'm no good, I'm useless. Um, personally, I don't believe that at heart anyone is useless or anyone is no good. My belief is at heart everyone is positive. But the thing is, if you see yourself from the mixed bag perspective, when it's all jumbled up in there together, that thought, I'm useless, I'm no good, even though you know you've got the positive qualities, really makes it hard for you to uh, 
identify yourself with that solid part of your character so you can be effective in life. So this is what we're trying to do there. And we can do a lot of this from looking at the past. So all the sort of questions that, that you might look at, all the different phases of your life that you've been through right up leading to today, and then all the, the issues relating to various family members and the influences that they had on you. After a while, when people are writing down these various clues and factors here, they do tend to identify that this positive side, people could call the real me. You might call it my true self, or other people will have an, another way of uh, looking at it, something that they call for themselves. But this is, this is the deep down person that they truly are, this positive person they're born to be. So I've written that down as the real me there. Then um, this, the whole collection of all the, the bad thoughts and, and feelings that have got into your head while you've been uh, growing up and developing, they form a bit of a picture in themselves, almost like they, they've got a bit of a character as this dark character. People call that, well, my negative side. Some people call it my dark side or my pessimistic side or uh, some people it's a heavy weight or, or they might have a really descriptive way of describing it. Um, but in giving that negative side a character, it does help to help you in your day-to-day -day life when you're trying to deal with things. It does help you to think, oh, hang on, I don't want my negative side to be uh, making my decisions here. I want the real me to be doing. So what does the real me want to do here? So this is a graph uh, here and uh, people can just keep it as a piece of paper and you can keep it in your pocket or as a part of a notebook or something like that. And every time you uh, notice, uh, get some positive thought or remember something that happened in the past uh, that's an indicator of the true self, you can just sort of write those clues down. Okay, now we'll move on to looking at the present. Now, looking at your present, that chart that I just showed you before where you can record all the information about the, the good positive things and, and also the negative things, you can use that in your present life. And it's good to carry uh, it around with you. Perhaps just have a notebook there so you can record any positive thoughts that you might get during your average day. Now, in a normal day, your mood actually does change. Um, so you'd know yourself, uh, just watching this, that perhaps in the day that you're in right now, uh, there'll be moments where your mood actually goes up and there'll be times where you feel quite down. Um, I use a graph a little bit like this uh, and this is a scale where you're feeling really good up here at sort of 10 out of 10 and when you're feeling really awful and terrible uh, you could be down at zero when life's barely worth living. Uh, around about five's average. So I often uh, with people ask them to just develop a bit of a sense of how you're feeling. People these days talk a lot about mindfulness and just being aware of your thoughts and emotions, feeling things, uh, which is good. I think that's important. Um, so in fact, in your normal daily life, it isn't just a flat line. There are ups and downs. So, you know, you might be up here and feeling quite good and something happens, you, you go down and feel awful for a while or you, and then, you know, it, it can vary. Some people spend quite a lot of time down here you probably say you, you're feeling really depressed when you're like that and you might come in and see somebody like me. And of course, if you're up here and sailing along having a really happy time, you'll have no need to, to go and see a counsellor. But wherever you are actually on the scale, you still have your ups and downs. Even if you're really depressed, people who are really depressed still will have moments where they actually feel themselves making a rise, a rise from perhaps two up to four. So. These rises are important. Whenever you feel a, a bit more positive, uh, you notice uh, something's happened and internally you can feel a little burst of positive energy. These are things too that you want to cl clue into. You want to say, okay, gee, I'm feeling better now. I wonder what it is that's making me feel better. There's something here that obviously feels right for me. What is it? So, when you notice yourself feeling good, ask yourself, what is it that's making me feel good? What is the vital ingredient here? And then write it down. You've got to get the, uh, the exact thing. Now, sometimes people will have uh, done something and it's been a great success and everyone's patting you on the back and you feel, you, know, you feel quite good because you've got a pat on the back. Well, it's not actually terribly valuable to uh, write down that sort of thing because everyone's going to feel great when they get a pat on the back. It's more when you're doing something, and it doesn't really matter what others might say. It doesn't matter if you're getting rewarded for being a success at it. It's more an internal thing of, gee, this is something that's feeling good for me. They're the sort of things that you want to write down as positive qualities on that chart there. 